Hey everybody, this is Matt from Texas Toast Guitars, and to my right, your left, is Steve from Maximum Guitar Works. In fact, we are at Maximum Guitar Works today, and I brought one of our Challenger Level 1s, and we're going to try out Steve's Plec Machine. Um, Steve, what is a Plec Machine? A Plec Machine is a CNC that basically takes care of almost anything you could do on a neck for the fretboard, okay. planing, um, fret slots, inlay, nut wow. slots, nut height, angles, um, once the frets are inserted, okay. shaping of those, of those frets and, and pr producing the perfect um, height of frets due to playability based upon your specifications of actions and string spread and stuff like that. And you can only do that on a new guitar? Nope. You, you can do it on anything. This particular model called the Plex Station is designed to be able to do small production and also to do repair work so that... That's cool. Yeah, anybody that has a guitar that maybe doesn't play as well or they feel as comfortable on it as they want, um, this machine can help dial it in to levels unheard of. Uh, we're talking a resolution of one thousandths of a millimeter. Okay, all right. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's kind of like saying a kajillion dollars. <laughs> you know? So how many plug machines are there in the United States? Do you know? There's, um, the last time I looked, I think there was about 30 machines in the entire country. Okay. And this is the first one in Colorado. So how, so how far, so, because uh, I didn't even know that you had a plaque machine, and here we are with our guitar, and you're going to plaque it, and I would have had to send this to like Nashville or something, right? To... Yeah, yeah, the closest ones are um, Kansas City and Salt Lake City are the closest. Okay, so and do you, so, so you offer, uh, I, everyone should know by now that you have laser cut templates with the off-body alignment pins, right. you have uh, necks, and you have bodies, and you have all sorts of OEM um, uh, manufacturing capability. In fact, all of our stuff for our level one and level two guitars, uh, uh, Steve helps us out with, with those. He's going to be helping us out with some of the icon stuff uh, moving forward. And um, uh, But if you have a guitar neck that you want plucked, can, they, can someone just send you a neck and, and say, hey Steve, pluck it for me. Or like if Ike at Flipside Music, the great American guitar store, took a bunch of, like if they took necks in there, how, how would that work? Yeah, um, yes and no. Okay. It is possible, um, but all of these things that the Plec machine does to the neck is done with calculating um, all the specifications under string tension. Okay. So it. Oh, so you can't just send a neck in? So you can't send just a neck in. Okay. okay to do that. What about, can you show everyone my, my new model? Yeah. So, so this is the new Texas Toast model. You know, with uh, rear tuners, because <laughs> everybody loves Ain't that. Ain't it cool? Yeah. yeah. We could be headless at this point, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Matt's going to build a headless guitar. Uh, it's it's all right. You already built it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, but this is something that I created in order to simulate string tension on a real body. Because it just makes sense for us to offer a plect neck and, a, and plect fretboards and, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a feature of our guitars, and since Steve can do it, it's like, well, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Let's let's have Steve do it. You yeah. already you already make the necks and the bodies for us, right? The, what what we get though, um, like this. So this body you built, and this neck you built, right? We get them, and we we fit the necks, and we cut all the pickups and all the stuff. We fit all the things, um, and on this one, we actually fretted the neck and uh, and and cut the nut and uh, and did everything. So go easy on this one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. who know, who knows how? I wonder how close it is. We'll we'll be able to see. We're, we're gonna know soon. All right, cool. So, um, but from now on, we can have Steve put. Uh, get, we can get necks from Steve that are go through the Plex machine. He can fret them for us with whatever fret wire we want. Yeah. And it's just a it's just a cool way to, to offer more features um, uh, at a at a price point that um, we heretofore could not could not do. So so that's a pretty yeah. neat thing. And you know, and I. I have intentions to make these for other uh, OEM customers mm -hmm. so we can simulate that as we're just making their necks so yeah. that they can do their final sentence. How many, how many more have you made for other OEM customers? Um, you're the first. 
<clears throat> Hear that, people? Yeah. Okay. So I, I did. I did make one that we use for our in-house production of uh -huh. Strat and Telly next That will it will fit both. So Strat so really Strat and Telly. So, okay. so really your number two. Okay. All right. All others are number three <laughs> or lower except for Fender. That's not bad company to be in. So. Um, so uh, um, now for those people who don't know, we still do hand make uh, uh, our level three and level four guitars. So if you still want a handmade guitar um, uh, and you still are willing to pay handmade prices, well, we've got you covered there too. But I think that the, uh, the level one and level twos are some of my most um, uh, favorite things in the world because it's still our, our design that Chris and I came up with uh, 10 years ago. And it's just, uh, Steve is, a, basically uh, helping us build as many of them as we can so we can offer them at prices that we wouldn't be able to do if they were all handmade. Yeah, so, I'm basically an employee of yours that's located like 45 miles That away. I don't have to uh, 1099 or pay insurance on. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm gonna give this to Steve and he's gonna put it in his Plex machine and uh, we'll probably show you a, a little bit about that. Uh, how long does it take generally to do? To go through an entire, let's say it was just a guitar we're gonna do, we're gonna scan it, evaluate it, we're gonna come up with a, a proposal of what to do to make the playability better. Okay. Um, all the way through to implementing the process and then the final sanding is, uh, flap sanding is still done by hand. Any okay. other tweaks and adjustments is still done by hand. Um, it can be about a two hour process start to finish. Okay. Some of these, if once we get into more of a production schedule, then it'll become more efficient uh, easier on a, on a new neck, not a... Well, just all necks will be identical, right? Okay. So yeah. I would have two of these um, string tensioning uh, bodies, and then i will be working on one while fitting another one, and then it'll just keep rotating, going, and more than likely, most of the settings that we apply are going to be okay, identical. that makes sense. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to give this off to Steve. He's going to put it in his machine, and we'll, we're, we're going to film the whole process, uh, but we're not going to sit it for not two, two hours. hours. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, is there anything else that like I forgot to talk about with uh, with plucking, or that I missed? Obviously, there well, stand out. I would say one of the most important things to understand is it's a CNC, right? Okay. A CNC does what it's told. It's it's oh, no, zeros and ones, right? It's not Terminator yet. Not yet. Okay. But it, it does what it's told, and so it's really up to the technician, the operator of of the plec to really capture the essence of what the player wants and then make the adjustments to in order to achieve that. So they have to know what they want and then they have to be able to verbalize that to you. Exactly. And then you tell the machine what, you you translate that into machine language and then the machine, and the machine does, does it. what it's told. Okay. So that's, that's the critical thing. I would also say that one of the most valuable things is the the scanning process will reveal things about your neck. I mean, we've had guitars that we were recently running in here that were big brand name guitars, right? And they seem to play fine, but we ran it and there's problems with the fretboard, a hump in a position where the okay. truss rod is not gonna get it out. That's gonna require a little bit more effort to can really- Can the black machine help with that? It can help with it, but it, obviously it's, it, it would require probably removing the frets on oh, that, okay. replaning the fretboard, reinserting the frets, and then, and then doing the final plec job for the ultimate playability. All right. So if you want a perfectly set up guitar, this is the this is the hot setup. Steve's going to show us how it works. Well, he's going to he's going to walk us through a little bit, and we'll show a little bit of how it works. But if you want your guitar plucked, uh, maybe maybe Steve can help you with that. Or, um, we're going to have a link in the description below to Steve at Maxim yep. Guitar Works. You can get in touch with Steve. Absolutely. And uh, um, well, let's. What what is it that you say, Chris? Uh, it's time to stop talking. Enough flip flabbing. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Lip lip jabbing. Well, let, we're gonna turn it over to Steve, and he's gonna show us how it works. All right. All right. Now we got uh, the Challenger mounted into here. It's uh, it's held snug in that for for the scanning that we're gonna do um, with the machine itself, and that's the next step. Okay, so the initial scan is, is telling us a lot of information. Number one, the red line is, is where your string action is. The green line is where you want it to be when this guitar ships. Okay. Okay. This is, 
again, this is such a high resolution. What you're seeing is thousands of a millimeter. So you see, in order to see what's going on, these frets had to be made like an inch and a half tall, mm -hmm. okay, in order to put it in perspective so that we could see the minor changes because we're talking about thousands of millimeters mm -hmm. that, that this is taking effect. So um, the night height looks pretty decent if you look at, at this string. Now it looks at, at every string individually. So here's um, the 10, there's the 13, 17, 26, 36, and the 46. Fairly consistent. Um, but the nuts could come down, the nut slots could come down a hair, but most of the high action that gets you outside the yellow range is just coming from the bridge setup. Mm -hmm. So that again is something you can easily adjust. Now, when we look down here, the blue line is based upon the action that we chose and the string gauge and the tension that it's currently under. This is the predictive line of what the, the relief should be set to. And again, it's expanded, so it's not that big of a smile, right? We're talking probably several thousands, you know, of, of relief. But you see it's off a little bit. So we could try to take some of this out by adjusting the truss rod first and get it closer, and that may also help some of this area come into play. Because again, the red line is showing where it is and this is showing where it should be in order to have optimized playability for the action that you want. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. All right. So I would recommend that we start with a, with a minor truss rod adjustment. Yeah, I think it needs it. So it's all done now? Yeah, so when it completes, it comes up with this message. Plec fret dress quality achieved. If it doesn't hit the param parameters that we set out for, then it'll say it's not achieved, and then we have to go back and see what it wasn't able to accomplish. Um, and so we just say okay, and then we'll, okay, it's finished. And now we can go begin to look at stuff. So here's kind of like the early thing. Now, if you look at this now, Remember, we adjust the truss rod, we got that as good as we could, then we worked the frets, and we've got those, uh, I mean, really almost dead in line with the, with the green line. Yeah, okay. The red and the green. You know, if we zoom in, we're looking at, you know, thousands of a millimeter, you know, variations here. Um, here's here's 0.25 of, of a thousands, I believe. Is, so it's... It's, it's just insane, and we can look at every string, you know, individual and see that. Now, we still see that the saddle height is set a, a lot higher than what we need for the action that we wanted. And obviously, the, the machine can't take a little Allen key and get in there. And... Right. Okay. So that's something that we have to set up, but we could, we could set it up, rerun the scan, and we could see when it comes into the yellow band of acceptability okay. based upon the preferences that were indicated. But if we look down here at the nut, I mean, it's the nut is within that acceptable range, um, you know, of of uh, nut slot depth. I mean, it's right at the top edge, but it's not even worth adjusting at that point because again, we're talking about fractions of millimeters, so so small that it's not going to make a difference in the playability. Cool. So so it's looking really good there, and that's just adjustment we can do later. Um, we could also kind of look at the action now this is the action that we wanted but again it's not going to be accurate only because the saddle's not set yet if we did set it and remeasured it then we could see where it is all of this is at the 12th fret so the saddle height is causing it to be higher than we wanted but you can see it's a it's a a pretty good curve 
uh, following the fretboard, okay. so we know that's right. And if we just adjust the saddle, this will turn out good. Okay. And then we could see the saddle and the nut at the same time, and you can see uh, the nut slots individually. You can see we got one. Uh, the B string may be a touch high. That might be worth taking and chasing that with a, you know, whatever uh, thirteen thousands file and mm -hmm. chasing that ever so slightly. But again, we were, we were just talking such a micro amount. Um, it's it'd be imperceptible. Okay. All right. And these are each string individually. So now we have it right on the line that we wanted it to be, with the exception of. Uh, I mean, we've got a few here, two thousandths, six thousandths of a millimeter, you know, off, but all within the acceptability range. I mean, again, it's, it's like, it's crazy how, how little it is, but you can see each string individually, it's right on the money for what we need for best playability um, of the action that was determined by what, what you like to send your guitars out as. Cool. And that's it. If we were going to do the nut, if it needed it, we would follow it at this time. Um, but uh, I would, we would, we would take this guitar off. If this was like a retail uh, guitar coming in for servicing, we would take the guitar out. We would um, reset it up and kind of set the action, set the intonation, set everything exactly how it's supposed to be for, for best playability to go along with the work that the machine just did. So my brand new model, Steve, what's, the, what's one of the defining characteristics? Quick release tensioning system. Check it out. So yeah, we're going to release the tension and hopefully it doesn't fly off and hit me in the face. <laughs> and we'll take all these strings. Just get that out of the way. The nut is not needed for the planing of the fretboard, obviously, because so it can go yeah. all the way past, and that should be good. All right. Remove so this nut. is this is how a Challenger uh, fretboard is is uh, professionally radiused here at Maximum Guitar Works. You guys watching? Put that on there just for safekeeping. Uh, toggle switches. We don't have any of those. Everything's good. So this guitar is totally plecked and we set it up and it plays great. Um, we even put it back in the machine and the machine told us that it was exactly within the parameters that we set forth, which was for like uh, bridge height and everything like that. But what else did it do? See, it leveled all and dressed all the fret. How far off was it? It wasn't bad, it wasn't bad. In fact, we didn't do anything with the nut because it was within the yellow range, mm -hmm. right? So, so the nut was perfect. Um, it was taking off very minimal passes. I mean, it, it's such a light, and we're talking about thousands of millimeters. I don't know if we can really comprehend how little <laughs> that is, right? But of, of, of all the guitars that we've worked on here, this is about the bottom range of the number of passes that it took, so okay. it, it, was, it was pretty darn close cool. to being optimized for, for the action. Well, Chris does a good job, doesn't he? He does. So, so um, well, if you guys want to have your guitar plec, just like this Texas Toast guitar is, um, you can go to Maximum Guitar Works, link in the description below, and it's on there. You can go on the website. They can, they can order it if they're local. We'll, uh, they can contact us, figure out a time to drop it off. If they're out of the local area, then obviously it can be shipped in. Okay. And, and we'll just put it in the line to be, to be serviced. And if you want to buy a guitar that's already been plecked, this one's for sale too. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can buy this Challenger Level 1, the very first uh, Texas Toast guitar that's been plecked. So that's pretty neat. Yeah. You could have, Doug Santaniello is going to buy it just because it's the first one. Yeah. So uh, I have to sign that on the head. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what else, Steve? What did, did we miss anything? What are some preconceived notions about the pluck machine that just aren't true? Well, it's like one thing that you'll hear that I've heard um, in, in the past is that uh, we don't want to remove a bunch of fret. We want to leave as much there as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what this is doing. 
That's okay. exactly what any fret dress does, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it only takes off what it has to. So, so that's not really, uh, you know, to me, that's not a valid point because what the gain, what you're gaining, is the precision. You so if you're, that. and yeah, so if your fretboard is good, and your frets are good, and you press them in correctly, this should have very, very little work to do. But it, it'd be the same work that you'd have to do. Uh, uh, if you did it by hand, only it'd be, it'd be perfect every time. It's perfect every time. Okay. That's the consistency of it is, right. is the key. And the fact that it's customizable um, to exactly the action and the setup configurations that, that you elect. So if somebody you know, sends us something to work on, then we get that information. We have to get that information. Because uh, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but we were talking about you know, some people say, ah, it, I didn't really like the way a plucked guitar played. Well, it, it has a lot to do with I've the heard that, and I'm like, how did, well, I don't know what it, would, yeah. what it could possibly change. It's the know? information, it's the technician who's operating the machine, who's basically massaging all of the numbers mm -hmm. to make it produce the performance characteristics that that person wants. Is it fair, too, to say that if you heard about a guy who had a guitar plucked three decades ago, it's a totally different system now. Than the, the, the plucked machine has been around for 20 years. Okay. Okay, and it has changed dramatically in that okay. time frame. Um, and it continues to evolve and grow, and we get updates that improve the functionality okay. and, and the record tracking so that you bring a guitar in to us today, five years from now, you can come back and you say, man, it was perfect when it left, and you set it up exactly the same way. If somebody, if somebody had like a... I. I want my strat set up just like uh, uh, somebody that you've done a plec job for. Can you can you can do their their guitar we, exactly we, like it? We can use the files that we have, and we can see all the Pro action. Provided they have enough frets and yeah yeah, yeah and, okay. and we can get it set up nearly identical to can, that guitar. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if somebody said I want my guitar plec to be exactly like insert name of guitar hero, do you have like files online that are? Can you download files for I, I, Steve Vise, Ibanez, and... I, I have all the files of, of the jobs that we've done. Okay, so there's no library of PLEC uh, uh, information that, that, that they can... No, but there's, there's, there's probably other systems out there that if you offer enough money, they'll sell you their No, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> but okay. no, it's not, it's not designed you know, to be interchangeable and kind of a cloud-based okay. where okay. you pick and, pick and choose this guy's guitar and you make okay. it. Okay, all right. Well, Steve, thanks for having us out here today and, uh, and walking us through the pluck machine and, and plucking this guitar. And um, I'm sure I'll get a bill for it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, but if, like I said, if you guys have any, uh, any questions about pluck machines or you want to have your neck plucked, uh, give Steve a call. He's the only guy in the area uh, here in Colorado who's got one. And within, what, 500 mile radius of, of where we are right now, yeah. you're the only game in town. So, uh, so Maximum Guitar Works comes through again, and uh, you guys could have a perfectly, uh, perfectly fret, pleck, dressed, and leveled, and everything nut work done, and uh, um, or you could just buy this one. That would be the easy way. That'd be the easy way. Yeah. All right, gang. Well, this is Matt from Texas Sos Guitars, and Steve from Maximum Guitar Works, reminding you that if you're so smart, you should start your own YouTube channel and start with excellence. All right, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Cause when I'm out and I'm having fun, you know, I won't stop rocking till the cows come home.
rock it till the cows come home.